What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back to Liga Mark. Eric and Mark here with you guys for a little bit of a late. We missed a day of weekend recap, but we're still going to look at some of all the big uh, news from the weekend sneaking into that Monday because there are a lot of doozies across three different major regions, and we're starting with an LEC record. The most kills ever in a best of five and Fnatic and Vitality didn't even need five games to do it. You know what? It had to have been something with the Eclipse yesterday. That had to be what was powering this crazy series between Fnatic and Vitality. Yes, the record for kills in a best of five. We were only a best of, we only had four games in this series. One extra in hand, still setting the record in the LEC. Uh, make no mistakes, this was a fiesta going across. There still was some excellent gameplay within that series that we will dive into. But to get to that many kills in that short amount of games, that's certainly a fiesta for me. There was a permanent Renata Glask ulti going across this series for both teams because it didn't matter how ill-advised the skirmish or fight was, these guys were taking every single fight just hoping trying to outplay the opponent and when you watch this series start to finish honestly most of it is just a noah montage reel karzi as well had some fantastic moments both 80 carries stepping up but as soon as you hear the crowd multiple times chanting noah that was a pretty damn good atmosphere the lec boys were putting up was pretty epic and i think that that's one of those things one of the reactions one of the fallouts that we have seen from k corp's introduction into the lec was you know having them there and how loud and boisterous they were for their fandom raised up all these other organizations all these other lec teams k corp might not be there but that environment that attitude has stuck around in the lec and you're seeing that in the fans for fanatic and getting a performance the way that Noah was. Seemed like someone spilt, you know, uh, soda or pop all over his keyboard, and the go button was in that sticky situation of just on go all the time, always pressed down. And certainly there was a handful, small handful of times where you maybe would, would reel it in in more, uh, you know, other certain, certain circumstances. But there's a lot of other times where a lot of these plays happen you don't get happening if you don't take that risk. If you don't bet on yourself, bet on your execution, bet on your teammates making that execution and helping you out. This was a really good job from Noah and the rest of Fnatic in that regard. Yeah, big shout out to his bot lane buddy, Jun, as well, because the bot lane as a whole was fantastic across this series. But yeah, a statement series really for you to say, Noah, pretty clearly the best ADC in the LEC right now. And you look at the rest, of that Fnatic squad. Great showing from Razork, uh, especially on the Vi multiple times in this series. Humanoid, I mean, they went back and forth, did him and Viteo, where there were some games. Viteo solo killing him, getting a couple K ahead, gold wise of Humanoid. But when it came down to the nitty gritty team fights, it was Humanoid finding the plays. Fnatic as a whole finding that extra gear for these 35, 40 minute team fights when there's already been 50 kills. They're, they were approaching two kills per minute in some of these games. Not usually one kill a minute. We're like, wow, that was a bloodbath. They were approaching two per minute. Now, there is something to be said about this one when you have that eye towards these next matches for Fnatic for that path you know, to the LEC finals. You do have to realize, okay, we want to tidy some things up. You got to tighten some Just things. You got to clean. <laughs> Maybe more than a few. I'll allow that one, especially when you were gearing up and you're reminded of that last match you had against someone like G2 and how throttled they were able to quickly throttle you in a series like that, especially one where you felt like you were rising up, heading towards it. So this is an important one to, to keep track of those mistakes as well. But look at the positives. Look at that execution. Look at the fearlessness that you had in this series to promote those, that type of, of gameplay, those type of kills. That's something that I think should be kept forward for Fnatic. And they probably should be favorites heading into that next match, which before that absolute slobber knocker on the rift we had, that winner's finals between G2 and Team BDS, and listen, this one was a banger in its own right, mainly because BDS, two out of three of the wins that G2 got in this series, they had a six, 7K gold deficit, had no business 
finding some of these angles in team fights to get back in the game. A lot of that is obviously because of the play of Caps, who 100% should be getting MVP this year. It, it was it was one of those things where it feels like you're you, you got a you know a wet glass you're holding onto it, it slips through your hand and you just catch it at the last second the clutch grab that was caps in this series every single time there was any little slip up any little mistake coming through from G2 he was there most of the time to bail them out in this series that was a really crucial factor for me it it does sting because this was one of those ones where yes you saw the power right of the gate from G2. But you did see that uh, tenacity, that resilience from BDS to stay in the game, find their own avenues to chip away at it and get to some avenues where they do have a reason to fight, to uh, contest objectives and having a, re a real chance at being there for it. Unfortunately, it just never worked out at the end. This is a uh, peak Mickey Hillisang crossover where you're playing Lulu and Janna flashing forward to engage, getting knockups uh, with the Lulu ulti. That was an absolute sight to see from the GOAT support in the LEC. But the other big thing to obviously take from this series, apart from Caps being the absolute owner of an entire region, is the lane swaps that G2 was putting out in this series. We've highlighted it with NIP earlier in the split, but they did it one single game. You look at G2. They're doing it multiple times throughout this series in different ways, often just starting with the straight up Fiesta level one. But this seems like a legit strategy going forward for G2. I'll leave it to G2 to take it to the next level. You got NIP and the LPL out here serving out classic, crisp, fresh, juicy grilled cheese sandwich. It's just that single nice slice that you always remembered. But you're going over to G2's house and they've got the five, six, seven different cheeses on that grilled cheese for that lane swap. That's how it's rolling through. Yes, this series uh, was a great example of it because not only game one, not game two, not game three, all the way through, you had this lane swap going on. You had it all, all you know, top, bottom, all the way through for G2. What's old is new again is the way it seems in this lane swap meta because we have certainly seen lane swapping to this type of degree before. A little bit different with the environment and the, and the shape the game is in right now and what Summoner's Rift is, obviously, and how it has changed over that time. You add in the lane swapping, and I think G2 is taking it to another level. And, you know, Scion is the obvious easy pick that we've seen for years be the top laner that you try a lane swap kind of like this but even you know on something like zach we're seeing it come out uh from g2 and listen this fourth game that's when they start cooking a little bit in the draft we've seen plenty of rexi over the last month or so haven't seen it go into the jungle for yike like we did and then that janna as i mentioned for mickey uh the lulu gets banned and he says okay whatever i'll pick another shield champion for the Ophelios." And that's the thing, I've, I I don't think we've seen enough of Janna in the last couple of weeks and in the time that she has risen up, especially throughout solo queue, because that has lasted more than a couple of weeks. I'd put that into a month and month plus type of territory of where we have seen her, you know, uh, priority rise up as one of these options. Maybe not the very top tier option, but one that certainly can fill in, as you mentioned, in, in that role for the Aphelios. Like to see that pick coming through. One of those ones I want to see happen more often. And, Absolutely. The Rex side of the jungle, I cannot believe it's taken this long to see it. Certainly uh, a more familiar place that we're, we're used to seeing her. And maybe the, it's not quite the same as having her as that full tank option in that top side. But I think that we saw the effectiveness come through for Yike. Absolutely. No question on the champion. And we've seen, I've seen multiple series, most of the games in the LEC, especially in spring. You could even go back to winter. Everyone's saying this region looks terrible. They got no chance internationally. But there's no doubt when G2 get things sorted out, when you see...